A lot of you probably use the right charger to, for your phone or tablet. If your phone needs a 2 amp charger, I'm sure you will use a 2 amp charger. You're all, you're all good like that, aren't you? But how many of you actually use the right cable with your charger? You wouldn't think the cable would make much difference now, would you? But using the wrong cable with your charger can make quite a difference to the charging of your phone. What I've got here, I've got a little dummy USB load which reports voltage and current. I've got a USB socket connected to my bench power supply, set for 5 volts up to 3 amps. Data wires are bonded together to make it look like a charger. The cables to the bench power supply are 10 amp cables. They can take more than enough current. The thinner cables to the socket are about as short as I can get them reasonably and still be able to manage them. So voltage drop from the power supply to this socket here should be pretty much minimum. So I'm going to plug in my little dummy load here and see what we get. Okay, at the moment with no load or minimal load we are on 5.06 volts. We wind up the current, 1 amp, 1.5 amps, Two amps, keep going up and up and up, and about three amps. Once we hit three amps, it should start to die. Yep, it's going dim. The uh, power supply is going nuts. Yep, so I can quite happily draw all three amps from the power supply, and at that point, we are getting about 4.8, 4.85 uh, volts. Now the USB specification says that from a powered output, powered hub, at the peripheral end of the cable you should get no less than 4.5 volts. So if we now take the load out and put a random cable first cable I grabbed this one here. This one actually came with my HTC phone. HTC 1, 2, Mini 8, whatever it is. So I'll we'll slip this into here. All the cables I've got are all uh, micro USB, all my devices are. I'm not an Apple fanboy. Let's plug that into the micro USB test port. Okay. Now already we can see that we've dropped a few hun few tenths of a volt there, or a few yeah, a few hundredths of a volt, even with minimal load. So let's wind up the current. And the power supply that came with this phone was a one amp power supply. Ooh, a dropping drop there. Already we're up to almost half an amp, and we've dropped down to below 4.7 volts. 4.5, right, 4.5 volts, which is the lower limit of the USB specifications, and we're drawing three quarters of an amp. If we try and draw any more than three quarters of an amp through this cable, the voltage plummets to well below the specification, below the level of a, of a lithium battery. So if you try charging a device which draws more than about a half to three quarters of an amp, regardless of how powerful the power supply is, you're not going to get a proper charge from it. So let's try another cable. What's this one? This is the one that came with my Samsung tablet that I'm recording on right this moment. And the power supply for this one was rated at two amps. So let's have a look. This already this feels stiffer and chunkier than the other one. So as you can see already, the uh, the voltage is higher. Up goes the current. Half an amp. That's up to the 0.75 amps that we had for the other cable. 
and we're still well within specifications. Remember, 4.5 volts is the limit. One amp. 1 1.25, 1 1.3, 1.37, 1.38 amps. We can draw before we hit the bottom limit, which is reasonable, I suppose. For a power supply rated at 2 amps, to be able to draw 1.37 out of it, steady state, and you've got transients and pulses of current that would take it up to the, the 2 amp limit, it gives you extra headroom for basically for the, the noise that it draws. So 1.38, that's not bad. Let's take it up a bit higher, shall we? See what we get at the full 2 amps. 4.25, that's... It's low, it's not as bad as the other cable, as you can see. <laughs> so that cable you can draw an awful lot more with. Right, next cable. I've got another cable to try. I think I have. Yeah, let's have this little one. Now this one came with my little uh, USB battery pack, quite a handy little unit, sold on eBay as a 50,000 milliamp hour battery pack, actually 5,000 not 50,000, <laughs> I did a, a good test on it the other day and it, it holds 5,000 milliamp hours, so 5 amp hours, so a good charge and a half to two charges for most devices, anyway. This cable came with it, and this is supposed to be able to do two amps. So let's have a look at this. It's a tiny little one. You'd expect, knowing Ohm's law, that the length of the cable affects the resistance. You, uh, cables are, are rated in ohms per foot or ohms per meter. The, length, the long, longer the uh, cable, the higher the resistance. The higher the resistance, the uh, greater the voltage drop. So you'd expect a really short cable like this to have a very low voltage drop. Unless it's really naff cable. Well, let's have a look. Plug that into there. Tiny cable and lower voltage already than the uh, Samsung cable. Remember this uh, came with a unit rated for 2 amps. We're up to about half an amp and it's dropping, dropping, dropping. 4.5 volts there. That's the lower limit. Point, 0.7 amps. So this little cable is actually worse than this huge long cable. It just goes to show how much of a difference the quality of the cable can make. I bet if I were to cut this open, I would find hair fine power cables. Uh, I'm sure I've got another one. Yeah, one last cable. This is a cheapo cable that I bought in bulk to bundle with the uh, Chipkit Lenny boards. I, it's considerably thicker than the two white ones, and this cost peanuts. I bought a, a box of 50 of them or something silly like that for about a pound each. So let's have a look, see if these are any good. Let's see what current we can get through this. Uh, already voltage is not far off the Samsung one. Half an amp. Yeah, we've exceeded the HTC cable. There's our one amp. Four point five volts. Just over an amp. So that's not bad, not quite as good as the Samsung cable, but it's an awful lot better than the others. Ideal for running a, a one amp device off a charger, full charge capacity. Let's crank it up. See how it drops off as we go up. Two amps, down to four volts. So I wouldn't want to charge a two amp device off this cable because it just can't provide the voltage. Look at 
that dropping right down to 3 volts, so 3.8 volts, 3.7, 3.6 as we approach the 3 amps, 3 amps, three, about 3.6 three volts at 3 amps. Not that you ever charge anything at 3 amps. Charges only really go up to the 2 amp mark, so... So yeah, you're looking at about an one point what is it one point one amp one point one five amps there we go that'll do on this cable and yeah I think it was about one pound twenty each or something these cables were in bulk and you won't get much cheaper on eBay oh, after running that at three amps the uh, the actual cable itself is starting to feel not hot just just warm to the touch. <laughs> so there you go. The cable you use between your charger, your correctly chosen charger, and your mobile device is actually pretty critical when it comes to charging. I hope you found that uh, informative and useful. Leave comments in the boxes below.